what can I say? Crickets will be crickets. Haters gonna hate. Just hate getting up and getting involved. And the whole point is we needed to be involved. For as much as I wouldn't want to, I'm finding out that's necessary. So what I want is really irrelevant. If I have a better thought in my brain, then I expect to see what was laid out for us to have and to hold. And you know, we were married to it, having to hold. It's a very powerful statement. But the common law, if you want to grab that up, not the judge-made law like they want to keep letting us know or tell us what it really is, but the things that men and women did amongst themselves and why we even got here. And over time, things have changed and altered, and they did it incrementally, and they did it transparently. And so you don't even know the condition that your condition is in. In fact, that might be the title of the broadcast. And together with that would be, this is BTW RLM 305. For those of you on past cast, recast, podcast, whatever cast you got back there, you want to find some of the content in the future. The links I use, if you want to do some checking down, do some research, do follow-up, I would ask you, you know, I just throw out the, the links to give you some place to start. Uh, again, as I say, this is a war. There's a target-rich environment. They're after your way of life. They're after your whatever you thought was normal. They're after that. They say they. Uh, it's identifiable a couple of groups that are doing that. And so there's nothing said and certain on who even between those may work, but I can find, depending on how you want to agree to the facts of a condition, I can show you, uh, if we wanted to continue to, uh, like any other blood clot in a system, you can start to pull everything together. It starts to point to a, a, a certain amount of things, and then that's physical. And then there's a spiritual thing behind it, which I've never been able to get to, and maybe not the guy to do it. Maybe that's why we're not getting there. The, this may be actually in each one of you have to step up inside that inspiration and, and move. And maybe I'm not invoking that, and so that becomes another problem. We're at some point going to have to make decisions to do something. Don't keep complaining that it can't be done and that, oh, the fear that I see is coming on us, because it will. If I, if I look at someone that hasn't done really anything that I can see, at least in my realm, of doing something in a more proper way that actually gets results. And if you're not doing that, and that you're complaining that the, the end is near, the end is coming on us, and it'll be here, uh, you've just asked for that. Because, uh, again, I have the example that says we can stop some of this stuff. All of it I don't know. I don't get everywhere. So th this is the thing. I kind of make a quick thing, th quick identification. If you're going to say it's coming to that end, and we got to go to the, let's say, oh, I'm gonna, we're going to have to do some physical response like go to the second amendment we're going to fight our way out of this you created that and so where the system of people that are there like let's say a government i'm going to talk about here you're seeing the evidence some more of this uh, military occupation you live under it, it, that's in front of everybody's face and no one even knows what to do about it uh, the they are going to win because you never took the steps to make it hard for them to not win and then then decide whether if they wanted to push that that cherry red button, whether they wanted to see whether or not the chain reaction of freedom would step up, being free, people deciding that was it, enough is enough, would actually respond to them better than we did in Lincoln's time. But this incrementalness comes in a different, a couple of different ways, for a couple of different purposes. And I can identify it in a method. I've identified it in a method. I've talked to you about it since, um, well, we filed a lawsuit. Jefferson Mining District filed a lawsuit in 2013. We attacked this administrative side in position. It's actually not administrative side. It's a foreign invasion that uses an alternative to your established government to defeat you. And people rarely understand this thing. However, that's the, that's the, that's the invasion of the people that set up the system that you live under now. It's not the consequence of Lincoln, which is a military consequence, which if you look, you have to wonder who is allowing who. And I said the power the guns are what allows the rest. So this is all under plan as well. So as I said, depending on what you want to agree to facts, and I don't mean your opinion of the facts, but you can go to these points in black and white go read the stuff for yourself. There is a way to combine this, depending on how extensive you want your research to go, will depend on how, how well you can build those facts that actually start to make a connection that's a whole lot bigger than anything I hear, hear anybody talk about in any cohesive manner. And if they do talk about it, that's where it ends. Now that everyone thinks the identity of the problem is the solving of the problem. And that's weak. I, I can't believe any reasonable man or woman would say that that's actually the fact. But one of the aspects that I speak to in defeating 
is this transparent method that's come on us. And it's come on in no different in a certain type of a military invasion. It's come on as a, as a systemic cancer inside the system. As I said, we can address, and we do, those of us that address, attach it, attack it, stop it, we can stop stuff. The problem is that we have a lot of ignorant people in, in society, absolutely ignorant. Uh, they may see the problem, they may sense the problem, as I keep telling you all. You sense it, you see it, but then you go and you don't do what you need to do to stop it. You, we are kind of devoid of what we were told, what I was told, what we had in civics class. The civics class was telling us how this thing was laid out. And we're not even, well, some of us were taught that. We don't even use that, those of us that are taught with it. And I say that that in a generality, those of us in a generality. Some of y'all, new, younger, newer, the newer hatchlings, they didn't get it at all. And so you see the degra deg degradation of what the education was. And uh, again, we can see that in the books as well. Uh, but there's this thing that's come on. It's not quite the military, but it's agreed to by the military. And we sued that condition where we produced the proof and the default judgment, folks. It did not answer. This is the Bar Association and the political parties. If any of you think that the political parties are going to do anything to help you, uh, they're not. And their representatives won't. And so we sued them and the method, which they, we have I read all this stuff behind the woodshed to y'all. Uh, where, let's say, the Bar Association and their House Delegates Resolution, all their members, they agree to promote sustainable development. And so then we have the whole federal government adopting that without a ratifying treaty. That happened in 94. I'll bring you back to some stuff here before we move on to show you that you can research all this out for yourself, bring yourself right up to speed. And if you listen to me at any t length of time, you can see how to address this stuff. And then you, you also hold out, maybe there's nothing you can't do in certain times, but there's not enough of us to do much of anything. I was thinking about that. What would it take? And I, I think I've said it, so the quick numbers I've told you already. There's 33 or so hundred uh, jurisdictions in the counties in, in, this, in the United States of America. And I've said it'd probably be best if you worked in th group, teams of three. We, we t we're told the three-strand cord is unbreakable. And I find that a couple people working together, three is a good good minimum combination that actually gets really effectual. The uh, the military went to four. I don't know what that was. But anyway, for, for us working, three of us can actually work pretty well. And so there's 3,300 or so jurisdictions. Now, Gary L., think of your numbers here, 3,300. Three times that is almost 10,000. Uh, so that's 9,999. If you will, we go 33, 33, 33, 9999, 9, and then we have one, one that would supervise the whole of the mess of people, mass of people that are working in groups of three in every jurisdiction across the United States. Over time, working diligently on point, it occurs to me that 10,000 people could actually bring back, bring us back from the precipice locally. That would be an interesting uh, wish that I would like to have fulfilled, but I don't know that it's ever going to happen. I can't get I can't get a handful of people to work uh, in the right direction. Uh, everyone makes them explain, explain some com, com, com big problem they can't over, overcome, and it's done. And so we're going to have to either go to guns or it's coming to the inevitable. We're watching the, the ev ev effect of that in, in the v yellow vests in France, and that's it. We're all going to have people blowing their arms off just like they did at Standing Rock. And I keep, all these is issues I keep telling you, they can go a different way. Yeah, you can do that. You can get inspiration from people, but... Do you think the people that are ordering the cops to go send grenades over to people to pick up and blow their arms up, they're not smart enough not to touch that firework? Do you think those people that are ordering the people to be in the streets care? And this is what I keep telling you. Be careful on who's telling the cops to go do their job. They just think they're doing their job. No one asks them what their duty is in the proper way. And they'll tell you their duty is to keep the peace, but they're doing it with the military. That's another proof, another style of proof. But do you think the people that are ordering them could care less about who's in the streets getting beat up and smoked out? No. You've got to turn your attention to those people making the decision. And moving on further beyond what we see directly in France, what I've been telling you administratively or within the process of the, what they call due process for how they bring this thing on you. There's an evidence here that I keep saying, the things I look at in the no, they call it the news, are notice. And it's whether or not you can or will use these things, or whether or not they are applicable. In other words, I don't think necessarily there is any fake news. As I was kind of explaining, it's been determined if it's a news organization, it's just lying is called free speech. 
So the other side is I use this stuff as news to give us notice. Notice, opportunity, time, and place. They give you notice. That's the legalism in the world that works against you every day. Every piece of information you have is likely a, a notice to you. And that notice is, a, is, a, is, is the first step in due process, reduced to four steps. Notice, opportunity, time, and place. And these are just set out in, by convention of custom as well. Notice is given to you. You have now have the opportunity to respond. If you don't, they take your silence as acquiescence. You lose to the point. Do I like it like that? No. But that's the reality. And so here we have, they tell you that they're going to take a standard. And the standard within the method I've identified for you. And talk about all consistently. I hope uh, you, you hear this consistency. Maybe almost to the broken record stage. But... It's so simple, and it's so directly applicable, and it's so defeatable that it's, I don't know what else to say. There's nothing more than to stay on the narrow path of the answer. And hope beyond hope, people start stepping into it. 10,000 people could start bringing the whole thing back, knowing what the problem star that started back in the 80s for the local lo your locales, your counties, were. And so this is how simple this actually could be if we were to reduce this whole thing to a number. But before, once you, but before we get the numbers, we have to have people understanding what the condition is. And one of the conditions is, is a stand, set of standards that have been set up by the occupier. Those that implement the method. And the method that I'll just reduce it down to terms here, you've got to go do more research on, is alternative dispute resolution through a consensus process, which is outcome-based. Some of you know it, will identify it imperfectly as the Hegelian dialectic. It's a whole lot more than that, and it didn't come from Hegel. But it, it's good enough for us if we want to understand and focus people's minds on what the heck's going on here. They use that method to get you right in your processes, to take you right out of your rights, your property, your interests, everything else. And we've identified that as if it's an official doing it, it's a felony. And if they took an oath to uphold a constitution because the method is not constitutional by any lawful ordinance or anything else, by their own quotes of the invader, that's treason. Pretty simple. Now, I just said some words, may mean nothing to you all. You might j bob your head and yes in, in agreement, but you have to, I'm saying you have to go prove that for you in the black and white, not your opinion of it. And then when you look inside, what they do to, to implement this method is they have standards. One of the standards is, well, you can see them, they come by best, best something. Best accounting principles. The one we're mostly knowing about, that most people hear about because of the so-called fraud of climate change promotion that Michael Mann made, that's M-A-N-N -N hyphen made, and it's promoted, the one that they tell us is that we're supposed to look at is best science. And let me hear a new notice to us, if we didn't know it before, and if we didn't have the proof, any of you all that are going to at least step up before you say it's inevitable that we're going to have to take the physical, the physicality of going hand-to-hand -hand with these people uh, that are in positions of power, if you think that, that that's all we, where we are, and so you're going to wait for that day, and yes, they will have caused it, but you will have allowed it. And so I don't even know where to begin to point fingers on this one. You know, I guess I have a different thought about us being more honorable. We have the insight and the foresight to be able to do better. Break the wheel of revolution. Step out of this history repeating itself and make the history that was actually supposed to be us in the peace we expect, notwithstanding our fallen nature. And that's where the law is supposed to bring remedy, and it's failed us so far. But here, one of the methods they use are best. Best this and best that. And I said, what if, and I don't ask, again, I ask rhetorical questions in the sense that I'm speaking out about the question that I know is the answer. The answer is not the question. It's not a question I ask. I'm asking the, the, the fact in a form of a question. What if best was a fraud? What if best was not actually anything viable and live, uh, liv livable, liable, uh, accountable? What if it just doesn't meet the standards that we were supposed to be, but that is the standard? What if crime was the best standard? And all the, uh, the criminal has to do is meet crime. And you said, okay, is this proof right here? For those of you working on the system inside, trying to work out how to approach this, and you run up against a condition for best science. And this happens wherever they do environment because they want the best science to do whatever. And they use that best science that's fraud. And we've identified that 
over and over again. This is, again, not, nothing I say here is really opinion. It, it's either read, I've either read it, or we've perfected the fact. And when I said the fraud of best science, remember I told you that we've unearthed, well, actually we got the, the lead from a Colorado county who was investigating whether or not the scientists in the BLM plan had actually concurred with the science on a, on a, on a bird, a, the sage grouse, the greater sage grouse. Well, they found out that the scientists didn't concur, but the record was made by the BLM, the Secretary of Interior, who is really the officer that's responsible for all this, said that there was a problem with the bird. And yet the scientists didn't actually concur. They made a record that best science said it, they, that the, the bird was interfered with in a certain way. That was never actually part of the legitimate fact. The best science wouldn't step up and make a claim. No, that's another type of problem. The best science that was promoted as best, best science was a fraud. We identified that by the, by getting the emails and putting that in a comment and said, listen, here's you're making a decision based on something you are knowing is a fraud. And there is no scientific concurrence on top of that, let alone being able to say there's a best of anything. And uh, that plan kind of went away, folks. It was that simple, too. Two people working on the problem solve that one. And yes, they're still there, but that's, again, that's just a matter of uh, time and looking at the focus on how this all works. There's only a few people really working on how this actually works out. As I've said, you get three people in every county, this starts to clean up pretty quickly. That the best science is now shown. If we didn't understand it before, utilizing, again, the statements of their own, most scientists can't, 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 cannot. Most scientists can't replicate studies. Science is facing a reproducibility crisis. Folks, they can put all the kind of terms they want on this stuff. This is fraud. And this is fraud to interfere with your rights under color of authority. These are felonies. Did I say that too fast for you? I say it all the time. Do I say that too fast for you? Something coming in the capacity of officialness that doesn't actually have a lawful warrant to interfere with you and your rights, your property, your interests, or whatever value you have, and and or hands that to a third party to interfere with, if fringe or whatever word you want to use, trespass, is a felony everywhere I've looked in every state, by the statutes, by the, the law that everyone wants to condemn because you don't want to use it. You're afraid it might actually have to get you to do something. The, it's against the law for people, officialdom, to come against you without the actual warrant to do so. And so we're looking at here not a reproducibility crisis. This is best science. Ad, some study admitting best science is nothing but a fraud. Why? Because science requires reproducibility if we're going to understand it. And then we find out that even that reproducibility may not actually be reality. But it's good enough. And that's the really fascinating thing that I ran across. That you can have, you can come to a truth and have it all wrong. The truth is the truth, apparently. But science is facing a reproducibility crisis where more than two thirds of researchers have tried and failed to reproduce another scientist's experiments, research suggests. Again, even the study of the study only suggests this is our, the state of our science in all this. See, people are so afraid to make a statement of fact and then have it submitted for people to test. They won't even do a research on studies of studies to say anything certain. Here's a, one of the problems that I see right here that you need to take cognizant of if you're going to move these things forward. Anything you're up against in the best science, I'd bring this thing forward just so you know what right up front. Uh, this is an admission by this study. Bring it out. Read it yourself. Go figure it out. Put it in a statement that said, this says that two-thirds of the science that you're relying on is likely has never enjoyed peer review, let alone been proven. And they, they give us a clue in this statement. You may or may not understand. I don't know all this stuff, but I can pick it up as I read it, as I'm focused on it. They also said that these studies are actually supposed to have like a test. The, the original experimenters or studiers or research, whatever, the searchers, they're supposed to test their own stuff a second time. And a lot of these tests don't show that at all. So on their face, by that rule... We know that this best science is still fraud. It's not even close to peer review. And yet, there, there's no reproducibility at a level of 66%. That these so-called best sciences can't even reprodu be reproduced. 
This is frustrating clinicians and drug developers who want solid foundation of preclinical research to build upon. This article points to those two. I'm telling you, they use that failure and they stick it in laws and codes that you have to live by. This is not just something for clinicians and drug developers, given we think that they're wanting to do well. No, this affects everybody relying upon this. And I'm not. And then the thought occurs to me: years ago, we identified, and the report came that thousands upon thousands upon thousands of reports were issuing out of China that were just fabricated. So you, you take that one as well. In other words, you start to identify the so-called best science can't even. There's not really an ability to use best science. There isn't any actual science there. They haven't shown that they've done the scientific process to get to the best science. And so I'm not just reading a story to you here. I'm just not telling you we have a reproducibility problem, reproducibility crisis problem. I'm saying you use this if you feel you have a problem in the world relative to the use of this information that has been used against you in the past. When you whether you were going to deal with a federal agency, the FCC, and the 5G, the people that the experts say that they rely upon, the FDA. Any of these people, any, people, yeah, they're, corporations are people too. Any of these agencies, there's people inside of them. You point out, make a record, they can't rely on the things they have been because it looks like here we have another study. On top of the dilution of actual science that there could be by China of this date from there back to now, we have this study that says that not the scientists aren't even doing their own reproducibility uh, requirements, and then two-thirds of those are not very good. It's not just clinicians and drug developers having a problem. This is not somebody else. This is affecting you. In the myriad ways that it all, the method allows it to, that I've told you you need to stop if you want to avoid what you see happening in the world about bringing the war uh, domestically against you, and you think all oh, you Second Amendment people think you get, that Lincoln didn't have the truth that you lost then, and that's going to continue. You don't have that perspective. I don't even know how to talk to you. But if you start thinking that maybe Lincoln told us something, and what happens? We may have a different path that we want to take first. And I'm offering that path right near. I do it every I do it every week for you. And we can take off the tension and the pressure that causes us to think it's over. Because it, it is looking over. I keep telling you, I'm just a, maybe a perpetual optimist that doubts myself every day about what I do. Until I work with my colleagues, or I get an email from you all that sending you're, you're telling me that you're researching and you ask me pointed questions. You're right on the right. Your questions are right on the next step. That's how I know how you guys are doing good, and gals, those that you do. But here we have. They're talking about clinicians or drug dealers. No, this is affecting you. These kinds of things. This is a notice to you that the best science that's relied upon, which I've been telling you is fraud, is now provable to at least not meet the ability to be science. And you could throw that into your comments and press that. And if they, if the, okay, so the agency disregards you. Well, that's going to require that injunction that I keep telling you about. Four step pro, four steps of. Uh, of elements you need is all you need. They can come out pretty short. They're only supposed to take 15 days. Uh, I don't know why this is not one of the methods that you would use to stop all this nonsense. And thousands of us doing this, we can start handling the problem while we pare it down. It's gotten too big. It looks overwhelming. While we pare it down and we get down to finally figure out where is the source of this this uh, hate <laughs> against the people themselves. Well, I think you'll still find it in the method, but that's... Uh, I can't. I can only say that because none of you will. Until you study, you won't see that yourself. And when I, when you do see it, I don't have to tell you no more. But so we'll keep moving here because there's some inter interesting things on this story, on the war, war against us and invisible, transparent to us. We weren't trained, if you will, uh, taught in, in in science for the most part. I barely got a glimpse. Uh, my, the, but uh, but I was one of the guys that got beat down when my look, little kid looking at the world and the, the universe and saying. But what you're saying doesn't really prove out somehow. Because, it, like I was telling you about water in the universe, when I was going through school, they said there was only water on the earth. That was it. And I'm looking at the, the sun, and I'm, actually I went through chemistry and physics, and I'm going through, you know, the chemistry, if you will, the energy dynamics of the sun alone in our, in our solar system would dictate there has to be water elsewhere. And you're shut down. You're, you're told just 
don't we don't want that's not the truth read the books well then we're finding out the books have been wrong and i'm feeling a little bit uh, disgruntled about my uh my inculcation at that point because what i see people now coming out that are trying to break out and actually coming out with real science is starting to fulfill not that i could prove my thoughts when i was younger but that i had the thought and it was in the right direction that that was stifled in me that i'm sure is stifled in a lot of other people and I don't know about all of our relative capacities, but I'm sure better than me or less than me, we were all stifled at some point, and our society suffers. Our society suffers by the fact that here, we, I'm reading you a report that finally, in 2019, comes out and says, all oh, the so-called science you're reading isn't, 66% isn't even passing the smell test. And yet, your governments, or your commissioners, your decision makers, whether they know it or not, are being imposed upon by this stuff as a truth and making decisions on it. Let me read, continue here, from his lab at the University of Virginia Center of Open Science, immunologist Dr. Tim Arrington runs the Reproducibility Project, which attempted to repeat the findings reported in five landmark cancer studies. Quote, the idea here is to take a bunch of experiments and try to do exact same thing to see if we can get the same results. Close quote. You could be forgiven for thinking that should, that should be easy. Experiments are supposed to be replicable. The authors should have done it, it themselves before publication, and all you have to do is read the methods section in the paper and follow the instructions. Sadly, nothing, it seems, could be further from the truth. I mean, I'm reading this and I'm saying, wow, this is just reproduce this in a statement to somebody who's making a seated decision, attach all the best science that they're saying, and saying, did they go through this standard? And if any part of this, the rule of the paperwork that, you, that, that they're relying on hasn't, it's defeated there for being arbitrary and capricious. I don't know why more people just don't want to do this instead of anything else I'm I'm saying I'm, I'm talking about. I see I'm not talking about it. anything else. I see going out in the world and people kind of responding to the world that's against them in, in this imperative of what we'll now see moving forward as a you know, this is all used underneath that Title 50 uh, in the military consequence as well. This is all the best science they've been using to justify even their exception. See. Yeah, see, I, if you could put that together before I got there, then you're, thank you very much. You're, you're really, you, I commend you for paying attention. See, all this stuff I talk about has a place to go you being used somewhere. And I can only talk as my mind is coming up with where I might be using it. Well, right now, it reminds you of Title 50. That's the war powers, folks. They even can't use the exceptions. They have to produce lies to be able to justify the ability to have an exception. In other words, it was fr if, if they can show that it was fraudulent up front, they didn't have the right to use it anyway, right? So that's what they don't want you to see. That's the invisible part. That's the transparent part to y'all. So, sadly, nothing can be further from the truth. After meticulous research involving painstaking detail, attention to detail, over several years, the project was launched in 2011. The team was able to confirm only two of the original study's findings. Two more proved inconclusive, and in the fifth, the team completely failed to replicate the result. Quote, it's worrying because replication is supposed to be a hallmark of scientific integrity, close quote, says Dr. Arrington. My problem with Dr. Arrington is I think he's being too diplomatic. If it is a, it, it's not a question, Repli by our standard of science, replication is the hallmark of scientific integrity. Whether the science it comes to is actually the truth and reality may be different, but at least the integrity of the hypothesis, thesis, whatever, it move to experiment into proof is integrity. He falls short here on his own statement, I think. This is not a question. Replication was supposed to show scientific integrity. And so he gives a little bit here. In fact, he gives a lot to say that it's, oh, it, it's work is it's supposed to be. No, if you hold the line, it is. And they're not doing that. And here's the evidence for you all. And so those of you that are, again, it's here for you to use. Not just complain about. Not just, oh, I know that now and we get to move on. Oh, those bastages. 
No, no, this is, they, you say that, they win. All these days, they win when you do this stuff. And yet you can take that, turn around, instead of chatting so much somewhere or complaining so much, you just put that in a quick little letter, you send it off to someone that's using a best science and say, based on that science and this report, did you know? And if you didn't know, how is your statement, not ar your, your decision not going to be arbitrary and capricious where you agree with this? Now, now you've just set yourself up with what? The standing to go to a, I know, a judicial member and say, well, this was arbitrary and capricious. That's an equity case in 14 days. You can turn around and do another one if they did, if you, if you did it wrong. You say, this, this decision is going to be based, it's arbitrary and capricious, it's going to affect my life in these ways. That's how you make yourself important to have standing to it. Not just that they did wrong, but that that wrong is going to harm you. And who, folks, in equity? Others similarly situated. How hard is this to write a piece of paper? What do I say here? I'm, am I talking to people who haven't heard me before? Then you just go simply go to Wiki, Wikipedia for the question that is. Go look and you'll see the four elements. Even how simple it's been reduced in Wikipedia, you can start there. The four elements put into a complaint, not just by statement, but by fact, uh, pro pro uh, providing uh, proof and facts for the element required. Well, the other uh, other similarly situated, you find people that are having trouble. You just find evidence in the news. Find evidence in the books. Find evidence um, anecdotally. Your own experience is an, is a, is a, is an evidence. And so you set, the, you set the stage for a question even before the bar member. But remember, if he makes a decision, even though they're supposed to have immunity that's not within the law, it's not really immune. The problem is you're going to find out there's another sense of the protection system that's occupying you. Here's the most important point. You've made it a proper public record for all the other prairie dogs to see. It's no longer a question or an opinion or something that can be used by those uh, systems to say you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, the judge found out against you, but did the judge have jurisdiction? Did the judge actually follow the law? Did they actually do what they were supposed to do? Those things are questions and seeds you plant in people's minds that they would have never seen before, ever, because that's just not how we've been wired to understand things anymore. Okay, so we go back to this thing. This is, for me, this was a replication was the hallmark of scientific integrity, and what he's saying here, but he won't say it because he's apparently being too diplomatic, He's got bread to butter here, folks, is that the failure of these shows a lack of integrity, which I know all you all thought about. So why doesn't he state that? And this is one of our problems about short shift sheeting our own statements, our own opinions that get put in us, and we start using that terminology to try and be diplomatic and not trigger anybody. And they, so this is what, the again, the triggering snowflake is really just some example for you to follow. They don't want you to think like I'm telling you and act, more importantly, take action. Not just act like on a stage. You take the action it takes. You do the steps it takes to out and cause a triggering in the system. You, you produce all these things as, as the racism. You can just turn these words around. These crimes are, can be turned around as the, I don't even know what the, how they go because I don't think that way, but like the racism and the bigotry and the misogyny, you could turn all this stuff around. You can use those very same words if you start looking at what this means and you could use those words. You could sound just like a, just like a lunatic, a triggered lunatic. But I'm asking you not to go there because you don't have to. But you could. And this is how they do it. They take anything and make a new issue out of it and then just hit you with the side, hit you broadside, and you, you don't even know how to respond to turn it back around to the fact of the fraud that was committed against you. The lack of authority in the other. If they're going to talk about free speech, we all have the right to free speech. Shut up. If you're going to tell me to shut up, I get to tell you to shut up. Now where are we at? Otherwise, I don't need to hear it at all. You can talk. I cannot listen. How's that? But this is more, this is what I say. We can get in fight amongst ourselves. But we can point out in black and white, I wouldn't say that we're, it would be worrying replication is supposed to. I'd say, no, replication shows integrity, the failure of which shows the lack of integrity in this science. Here's another tip uh, that we, you know, if you didn't, weren't into it too much. It's not just a, this is a festering wound that I've been waiting to watch the boil reach the surface and someone stick a pin in it. You could, any one of you. And we have, uh, but I'd like more, 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 more pins getting rid of this nonsense, poking the boil of society, 
Concern over the reliability of results published in scientific literature has been growing for some time. Oh, they know about it, folks. They know about it. They know about it. And they fail to do anything about it. And so sometime, you may want to go back and say, see, to the seat of decision, the paper, the comments you write, even if you're talking to somebody who's want to get in your face. I'm, not ta- I'm talking to an official. If people want to do that. You can just tell them to go away. Officials are not necessarily so easy to get rid of, but that's how you get rid of them by showing this kind, by having this word in your mouth, having this in your bag of facts, what I relate to the bag of law, as we have on the Jefferson Mining District website. It's a bag of law for the law you're going to use when you're a, a, a mineral state grantee or someone like Highway Grant or any other grant of Congress relative to the 1866 Act and the progeny from it. You have your bag of law and you bring your facts. And you present that first up to anybody that confronts you. And for those of you that are interested, we did have done some modifications. I'll talk about those in a moment. But for the highways, I've done made an addition to that 261 rule for those of you that are interested under the highway and trail download link or PDF and it adds that rule that says if you're underneath the mineral the 1872 act as a mineral grantee they can't they can't make an order to close you out so it's there for you that those of you that want to see it and those of you that may be not interested in mining but may be interested on in where there are people in the world that do have right to access their own highways You'll see that there as well. There's no authority in an administrative capacity to get rid of a granted right. And so we don't say it that way. We just go use the statute that says the orders that they issued to try and close your ingress and egress is invalid and void. So you just learn the language a little bit and you learn how to say speak through the black and white. But getting back to this. According to the survey published in the journal Nature last summer, More than 70% of researchers have tried and failed to reproduce other scientist experiments. I'm blown away just by 70% of those, and that's only the ones they tried to reproduce. We don't even know about the ones they didn't try to reproduce. And so this is another thing you've got to hold out. They're only talking 70% of what was done. I don't even know the database you would go to see what was done. And this is another silence that we don't know about. We could go research it out. It would be another piece of piece of information we could present to somebody. The article goes on to say, Marcus Munafo is one of them. Now professor of biological psychology at Bristol University, he almost gave up on a career in science when, as a Ph.D. student, he failed to reproduce a textbook study on anxiety. Quote, I had a crisis of confidence. I thought maybe it's me. Maybe I didn't run my uh, study well. Maybe I'm not cut out to be a scientist. Close quote. The problem, it turned out, was not with Marcus Monofo's science, but with the way the scientific literature had been tidied up to present a much clearer, more robust outcome. There's your connection to the method I talk about. Oh, it's just a word. No, that is what they do. That those studies are set up to do an outcome. It's called outcome-based consensus. It's what climate change runs on. It's why I know when I saw it, Michael Mann made my global warming. It wasn't anthropogenic global warming by, by definition, which is just, just a statistic to a relationship of nothing, something that's never been proven either. This is the stakeholder I tell you about. This is the political lobbyist in the costume of a scientist that I talked to you about in the 1985 comment of the guru that invented, that helped document and invent this stuff, the professor, and the terminology around it. Explained it all. Oh, wow, folks, did you understand? I hear I'm reading a story that tells your science no good, and I'm back talking to you about stuff I've talked about years ago, proving that's what they do. Here's the word, robust outcome. Robust is that thing sustainable. In other words, it's planned to try and to protect itself in its application against all attacks to impose the fraud on you. So you have to be there to see the fraud first of all, then you have to speak out against it. But here's the one little story, folks, that came up. i got tons to talk about on my tabs that I'm still not getting to. This is so important to get, but it builds on the basis of our failure as crickets that is so easily solved by this. I can just go read each paragraph and explain to you how this could be used somewhere. And I, I guess inside somehow, I'm, I'm, lots of people are saying, oh, they know the 
They know where it's going. On my next story, you're going to hear it. Uh, we know where this is going to go. We're going to have to, we're going to, and then no one talks in any specifics. France looks like what we're going to have to do, but it's going to get worse. And they're all implying, well, we're going to have to really go to guns. But nobody lifts a finger, actually, to avoid that. It's been a bother on my, talk about spirit. This really bothers me a lot. I don't even know what to do because it's outside of what I can, I can only talk. I can only explain things. I can only hope I touch something in any one of you that says, wow, okay, let's, maybe there is something I really, I can just look at it a little bit different way, take a different path, maybe pick up a couple of comrades since we're all in this gulag. Maybe we'll run and we'll do something a little different just to test that out. I'll read a little bit more here. What we see is in the published literature is highly curated version of, of what's actually happened, he says. Again, quote, The trouble is that to, that gives us a rose-tinted view of the evidence because the results that get published tend to be the most interesting, the most exciting, novel, eye-catching, and unexpected results. But I think as high-risk, high-return results. What's the risk? Well, that's risk management. He's talking right on the system. This is in the science now. This method I, we, we sued to enjoin. What's the, well, what's, what's the result of your suit? Well, when you live in an occupied country and the people that are ruling over you are these criminals, what do you expect a little piece of uh, paper somewhere is going to do when no one else comes to support it? There. That's our problem. So, no. The blame is on us if it goes to guns and attacks and all this other stuff. That's on us. We have the opportunity right now to stop all this. Point it out for what it is and write, get the, get the train back on the track that's supposed to be a society that we could live within and feel fairly t- relatively uh, re- re- reasonably safe in our goings day to day and that if we were ever wrong, we would have an actual remedy. Those days have been so long gone, it's, I'm embarrassed for us. No, they, they are that long gone. The reproducibility difficulties are not about fraud, according to Dane Outline Laser, director of a Sandsbury Laboratory at the University of Cambridge. I will tell you, he's one of them. See, this now they got to cover up the, 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 the cat box cover up right here, folks. So he's comment that would be relatively easy to stamp out. Instead, she she says it's about a culture that promotes impact over substance, flashy findings over the dull, confirmatory work that most of science is about. She is either a player or she is completely ignorant to the method that she's been inculcated into through the university system. That very fact that she talks about impacts is what you talk to in in an administrative process uh, where they are moving an alternative through. You show how their impacts were were fabricated to show no harm where they were supposed to look at it, and you show what the actual impacts are, and still and will be. That's exactly what they do in the method, what she is denying. So this university one, whoever, Dame, auto line, Dame, what a title here, Pooh. Lizer, University of Cambridge, director, administrator, she, I think she's in on it. She knows exactly what they're doing. They speak to the impacts because that's what you speak to when you're trying to shove something through without actual lawful right. Okay, I will. That's probably the best thing I can point out to you right there. The confirmation, in my mind, the way you read this stuff. It was a finding by someone who's trying to track down the truth and then the transparent admission to the problem by the administrator. Now, I'll pause a little bit because that's an, to me, that's an interesting view to proof that I don't know if many people take that, that little step there. You have someone actually looking for the truth and someone come back and confirm that the failure that was found is there, but uses it as a negative and you think it's not. And what they're actually talking about is the very thing they're imposing when the bad science, the best science of fraud is created. They should comes out. It's not about fraud. Why do you do that? You'd have to say that right out front. That's the first thing she addresses. Was the first thing I told you it is. That's a technique, folks. That's how I read this. No, these. I just give you a little technique there. That's how I read a lot of this. 
You watch the dynamic of language, of communication. She came right out in reproducibility difficulties. I told you it was fraud. She says it's not about fraud. Oh, folks, how'd she do that? How'd she know that those were even connected? Unless that's what it is. And she's an administrator. She's trying to tell you it's not about fraud, and you'll say, oh, okay. Well, you say it's not about fraud. Then you go, well, then what is it, Miss Director? And she says, this long old, big old long state sentence now. It's about culture that promotes impact over substance. Folks, that's fraud. And it speaks to the administrative method that destroys your life in the first part, the preparatory clause. It doesn't matter really what she says about how that's, effic uh, that's eventuated, flashy findings over dull, confirmatory work, what most science is, is about. Yeah, they also don't want to promote, science is pretty dull. You're either proving something or disproving it. it, it unless, you're, unless you're brilliant and you kind of have a new cool observation of reality and how that might interact with everything, you're not coming up with the new stuff. You're actually tracking over to prove out some old stuff, which is important work. But you're, you're more in the capacity of confirmation than you are in uh, exploration. And there's, there's places for every, everyone's got to, I've noticed people have a mentality for either one or all, a lot more. But anyway, so she comes right out and tells you it's fraud by, by denying that it is. And tells you how that is not fraud by exactly saying that there's a culture that promotes impact over substance. That's them, folks. There's no substance. There's no reality to what they do. They don't bring it by constitution or law or anything either. The entire thing is a myth that they get. It's an alternative reality that they get you to buy into. Remember, public buy-in is required. And again, I'm not the only one that talked about it. William Roberts. The late William Roberts would tell you that all the time, too. So if you need someone else, the voice is not here for us anymore in William Roberts. But he'd say, talk about it. There was two of us looking from the shoulder to shoulder in the same stinking abyss, folks. This is it. This is an administrator telling you exactly what I just said. It's about culture that promotes impact over substance. This, this is a throat culture. This is a virus culture. What kind of a culture are they talking about that would promote impact over reality? Is them, folks. And so I'll, I'll end it right there. We're not to move on. It's, it's, it's as important as other things. This little statement, this little link here that you get will be the proof that you can use to show the best science can't be or at least 60 to 7, 67 to 70% of the time. And did that study get done to produce the fact of the actual science, or is this actually the promotion of a, of a culture promoting impacts over the reality? There's a statement to make in the, in, the, in the question. And if they can't produce, when the response comes back and they don't address that, that's an equitable remedy to be enjoined for arbitrary and capriciousness in the decision. Pretty simple. And what are we talking about in this method? Uh, keep moving on. I've talked to you about it all the time. Another story pops up tell you they come transparent to you it's by theft right your your senses don't pick it up it's a high technology coating they put on themselves and they so they walk right by you and your radar don't pick them up your little antennas don't do anything and uh, together with the method i keep talking about it's strictly implementing impacts over substance that's what you all you got to do it's a culture of people it's a culture a cult it ends up being a religion and remember, there's only going to be one religion, the universal religion, that's all going to be tied together eventually and coming even quicker. Oh, wow, I just did a big another jump, didn't I? Another dimensional jump here. Yeah, it all ties together eventually, depending on how much you want to open your mind and look at the black and white and read it for yourself, and then how much you'll want to accept of that on top of it. We all have our decisions we can make. We do have the choice. Agenda 21, implementation by stealth was written on um, a range fire US I picked picked it up I think through uh, Vince's uh, t Twitter uh, make a statement that come in I think I'm going to direct you to this link because this is a Michael S Kaufman PhD he's the guy that in 1994 saw the problem it may be that you've seen the map that was issued with red and yellow about the country moving everybody into locales very small human habitats would be created this is the guy that identified in 1994 
that plan that defeated the treaty. The Senate was, he was able to walk in the Senate and defeat the treaty that would have brought sustainable development as a law upon you. This destruction of your life was, is that close. And they didn't get the treaty, so they've been doing it voluntarily. That's what you, that was brought in. This was brought in by sustainable development as voluntary. It's also attached to grant stream funding. But this work by Michael Kaufman was the explanation of his writing about this implementation spreading across America like wildfire. Like wildfire like the wildfire policy. Folks. Uh, I don't even want to read to you. I've talked to you a lot about this. This is the guy that saw it, I think, well, before I even... I can't say it was right, but he come out with his this map of, before I even knew how the thing worked together. But I saw the the that they call the infrastructure built inside our system. And that's how I started tracking on it. And then he confirmed that I wasn't looking at an aberration. He confirmed I was I'd actually been looking for myself and found something that at the time was really unknown. But there's been people researching this before me. And it's always nice to find some confirmation, even if it's not 100% proof, but here's the point. He identifies smart growth plus and all this other stuff and land use zoning connected to it, just like I talked to you all about. He talks about the Florida's 750 plan. This is years ago he's talking about this. Using all the terms, leveraged resources. When I talk about leveraged funding, it's how I identified the law for our lawsuit uh, that we sued in 2013. It's, it was I told you that story. It was the last bill. They had to try and shoot it through as fast as they could. I said, there is a whole bunch of legislation that has no funding, folks. Let's I'll always turn to the funding source. And it was the last thing they did a couple days before the end of the session. They finally they had to fund all this stuff. And sure enough, it went through. So we sued on the funding that we did, they did there. We didn't just sue on the, on, oh, it's Agenda 21. No, that was what they were paying to do. So I tell you, when you start looking at your facts, you may have to sit back and think what your strategy and tactic is and how you approach this. But here's leverage resources. The very first thing he lists on something that was written by someone who knew about this that I want you to be understanding about. He talked, you'll read all the things that uh, I, I've never seen this article before, but you'll see everything I've talked to you in here. Maybe some other things I haven't. I don't know. I didn't really go looking through it. He goes through all these terms. The way you can identify them is by these terms as well. He identifies the plan that's been laid out long before us, folks. And it. I looked at that as I was going up. And still, at the time, what he did, he stepped into into the Senate and he brought this map and said, listen, this is you agree to this treaty. This is what you're doing. You're taking out our people, our production, our land, our laws, everything. And some minds were in place then that said, okay, yeah, we can't, that's not going to happen. And so then the executive said, well, then we'll make it voluntary. Well, that tells you where the executive is. There's a war against you from the executive. And where have we gone? What I talked to you about, when you get to the murder memo by 2010, they're making it pretty obvious. So together with this best sciences, this Agenda 21 that Michael Kaufman, and I think he's died. I, I don't know. I think I saw that he had died. So he's not even with us now. Again, another another study, another knowledgeable man that's gone from our... Uh, we just have to take his writings now. And so we, we can either believe him or we don't. And we can believe it uh, when he figured it out in 1994 and we see the ramifications of what's going on. That that's a secondary proof. We can take that to the bank. And we can be quiet against it. We can complain about it. We can say, oh, because it's coming on us so fast, it's overwhelming us, we're just going to have to go shoot everybody. That's not going to do it either. I just don't... I just don't see. Well, the world that we have after that is probably not too too cool. When we have it kind of together, it's just been rail, run off the rail without accountability. At least that's maybe maybe that's a, an immature way to look at it. I don't know. I don't know how to look at it with respect to how I get responses after I say this stuff. A lot of it's totally off. No insight at all. I see absolutely zero insight in, in the world in some of the comments that come back about what I'm talking about. And I wish everyone had the insight to be able to realize we don't have to reinvent the wheel. we got to break the real revolution. We have to pick up the pieces that are here that were stolen back from us that we didn't keep. That was our problem. That's why I say, oh, yeah, we shouldn't be trespassing. If they, if they come and attack us, yeah, they did that. That's, their, that's their, their fault. But we didn't do anything to make it look like they shouldn't. In other words, look at Russia. They're not big enough to take down America, but they are the porcupine. They can do some severe, if not lethal, damage if, if the United States attacks it. And you see that it's not being attacked. And what they're doing is they're putting up whatever they can 
a minuscule amount, essentially, against what the panther might do in the world. They're the porcupine. And so you see, a di you see this dynamic working in the world as well, if you'll open yourself up to it. This issue here, not military, although it is a war against you, uh, they talk about, let me go some of the terms quickly, leveraged resources. That's what I call leveraged funding. You see that inside the statutes. That's the funding mechanism that they also then go attach the federal funding mechanism, which we sued through and got through the EPA about this, which you remember, that's one of the main, that's one of the pillars of how they bring this in is the environmental part. A drive competitiveness and prosperity. See the word prosperity sits in there. Remember that's shared. That's a shared wealth and it becomes austerity. Greater opportunities. It's not for you, for them. Sustained job creation. What in tourism instead of production? Uh, just as examples. I'm not. I'm not reading. I'm reading. A, I didn't read that. I'm reading the terms, but I'm giving you the quick example. Open space. That's the theft of your land underneath the pretense of needing an open space. A transportation options. That, that's the main attack at this point uh, for most people. Uh, that overrides your 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 uh, right to use the road that was granted to you. In favor of commerce, environmental friendly. Well, environmental friendly is. The, the main core of the thrust of why they t they come in. They want to make it warm and fuzzy like they're helping the environment. The only environment they're helping is their culture. They're helping their the culture that the the environment that helps them their culture metastasize in your country. And I won't read more. I just wanted to just harken back to this point. This is very important information that I read all at the same time about this scientist because they use best science and how they implement the environmental stuff. And so that was like a natural come, a natural way to move in through. I wanted to remind you that if you have a link uh, there to, to Michael Kaufman's uh, work, uh, it ties it all together. Very short synopsis for you all. If you want to know what's going on, what I talk about uh, in part is also what we address, but in part. Again, you know, these are not absolutes. These are just little bits of what, what you have to find out you know to, to address. Parts of it may be working at a time and not, and you have to be able to be fluid in how you respond to that. And uh, new in the news here to uh, the notice to us, and this is uh, another problem uh, with how this implements, and it moves on to the next thing that's going to on uh, here that people are noticing. I don't know if they're responding to it or not, uh, but it then now leads more into what I talk about, the, mili the uh, Lincoln consequence in the military. The U.S. Conference of Mayor launches Smart City Institute. The US, uh, M USCM is an NGO that draws membership from all cities with all at least 30,000 population. Its purpose is to spread sustainable development, a.k.a. technocracy, policies to every corner of America. Thus, America is going, is going smart city. If you don't like it, it can only be stopped at the city level. And this is the technocracy uh, news site editor who has wrote a book. I think this is Patrick Wood, although I don't remember. Anyway, he's, that's his comment. And this is a, when you see it's an NGO, that's tied to the UN. You see sustainable development. You see this is bringing them by the mayors. A formal institute for small, smart cities has been launched by the United States Conference of Mayors during, this is cities now. We've got to remember the hierarchy in our civics class of what this is. It's a city. They end up being city states now as we move in through the urban rural divide condition. And these city, these uh, mayors are involved. If you didn't think the, the, the Association of Western Governors or the Governors Association that sits in Washington, D.C. to help advise the local county commissioners on all this stuff isn't a subversion to where you're missing how this thing is so metastasized into this country and so easily, easily Vince, uh, defeated. A, smart, a formal institute for smart cities has been launched uh, during the winter meeting in Washington, D.C. Steve Adler, mayor of Austin, folks, Austin, you know, you folks in Texas, I, I don't know. I hope you I hope you see what's happening around you. I hope you understood that the proclamation, uh, I think it was Andrew Johnson and in, way back in 1868 said, said y'all weren't so weren't so free like you think you are. Don't mess with Texas folks. They messed with Texas a long time ago. Does it have to continue? Well, no, but you're going to let them mess with Texas. And this is I don't I can't get over how they tell us where the pivot, the pivot points, the hubs of the uh, occupation are in these stories, if we just pay attention. But Mayor of Austin revealed it will, uh, he revealed, it will help engage mayors around the three I's, innovation, infrastructure, and inclusion. Now remember, this is a foreign occupier and method 
coming on to impose those to on you. Is your private property inclusible? Did I just invent another word? Is it inclusible? No, but that's what they intend. The infrastructure is not for you and your bridges and your roads. See, that's d dealt with on another level. The infrastructure is putting in their the capacity build the infrastructure so they can do more implementation against you. And innovation is how smart like a fox can they be to outmaneuver you at every turn? Are, are they staying trans? Are they innovations to keep transparency? That so that you don't see what they're doing. Did any, I mean, you read those innovation, infrastructure, and inclusion. What do you think? I mean, I put, put words in your mind already, but what do you think? For me, this is promoting more of the same of the imposition to steal your way of life. One of the goals of the Institute is to allow mayors to define their needs from a smart city. The, this is usually defined by vendors, stakeholders, but in this space, mayors come together to define their priorities, said Neil Kleiman, a professor at New York University, Robert F. Wagner Graduate School of Public Service. Public is them, not you. Who has been on one of the founders of the new group? Mayors can bring their challenges to close, closed meetings, and one of the goals is to help them find a clear path forward for their initiatives and to and then connect mayors with effective solution providers stakeholders private public partnerships this is a university academic institute that's closed and they bring mayors in and if you listen very carefully all they're doing is a hegelian dialectic toward the solutions that they want and they want what is going to be given to them as the next good idea to be a smart city. You see, they walk into the meeting with the objective of being a smart, sustainable in, in trespass upon everybody's life. And remember, the first thing that Michael Kaufman mentioned was the leverage resources. That's your property taxes. That's fees, fines, and taxes. That's your civil rights being used again to help you. Well, out of your fees, fines, and taxes. And so here, this story came up about the mayors coming together, uh, the conference of mayors launching smart cities, and this other story now pops up, more in line to what I talked to you about, our consequence after Lincoln. And I think this is happening right before our eyes, and no one's responding. This is not the first time it's happened, and it's not going to be the last time. In fact, the article tells us that they do, these articles now here, this one and the next one, will tell us that they're they're going to do more. They have been doing more. And uh, we're set to figure out, well, why are they doing it? In fact, the second article here is, uh, has a title, What TF, WTF here, is going on in uh, in downtown L.A.? No one knows. And then they go make a phone call and you get the, you get the pat answer that's not what it is. Well, remember, Libra Code says you know them when you see them, and they don't have to tell you. So you better start being a little bit more insightful when you look at what's going on here. After this U.S. conference, a mayor gets launched in smart cities, and I'm not saying they're tied together. I'm saying you're watching the coagulation of the blood clot. The U.S. military holds unexpected war drill in downtown Los Angeles. Now, we've heard of this about Jade Helm and all this. We've heard of this before. But this has been going on now for a week, I found out, you, from the report. U.S. military holds unexpected war drill in downtown Los Angeles. I'm going to have to say, no, folks, someone expected it. And it wasn't the people, was it? No, because you are the prisoners. You're in the open-air prison. You're in the gulag. You're in the occupied territory. And I can go read this. Is a, I guess we could talk about it. Someone re equated it. Remember I told you about the the mirror, the carnival mirror that the Middle East is, is already here in the United States, but you, it's transparent to you? Well, someone looking at this, his, this is a statement. No, it's not Beirut, Damascus, or Kabul. It's downtown Los Angeles. So we are experiencing a very similar thing. Now, we're not going to go take it to the destruction of property. 
uh, and the corporation property, because that's that's going to be counter to the function of the United States as a corporation, isn't it? Or the promotion of business as business and co commerce that it has exclusive jurisdiction over. But we're going to see something, we're seeing something else. Now, we could have a bunch of objective, I mean, uh, opinions, and I guess I could say, well, this is what I'm showing you is an opinion, but I've predicted this coming on because of the consequence that we've been on since Lincoln. And you could ignore it, you could laugh at it, you could acknowledge it, whatever, but if you do nothing to start to form up how you're going to respond in this condition, we're looking at a pretty bad time. And of all y'all that are sitting out there saying, oh, well, here it comes, I'm just going to polish up my, uh, my ammo, this ain't going to cut it either. And then I'm wondering, how many of you all, when you're seeing this story, that they're doing training, you know, how many... How many shootings happen after the war drill, folks, over the training exercise that we've heard? You don't think that's going on as well? And then there's, this covers something else potentially that I haven't talked about or t heard talk about too much. When we talk about hoaxes and this and that and the correlation between drills that happened the day before uh, some high school shooting, yeah, well, they, got, they can be covering actions up that they, you don't even know is going on. They could be targeting people with this, and you wouldn't even know it. It all looks like part of the drill. It actually was under the name of a drill. And they were actually doing some kind of a military operation here, but it wasn't to blow up buildings. It wasn't really to blow. It's to take someone out and make it look like it's something else because you're all enemy combatants. The L.A. Times reports a series of loud booms that rocked downtown L.A. and a Monday night startled some people, but LAPD said there was no need to be concerned as the noises were part of a U.S. Army military training exercise involving aircraft and weapon simulation in urban settings. Now, when I thought about that, I said, folks, you remember seeing those stories where they said the military, and there's no money, there's no money consequence. They can lose $21 trillion somewhere. You think they could build a little town? They could build a little town completely outside of all this in an MO, actual MOA? Well, these are MOAs now. You don't realize that, but military operating uh, agencies, yeah, they're, uh, areas, yeah, military operating areas used to be confined in the flight sectionals, and you just didn't fly in those areas. Now, you, I, I wondered if they, maybe one was created here, but this is what they're doing. There's military operations in an urban setting. You don't think they could build a city with all the lost $21 trillion? They could have built a small city to do this in? And so something else is not, is, not, is not happening here with this story, even though we're seeing it repeatedly. And it, you can go on through the list of what it's doing, the desensitizing uh, people are wondering. Uh, what, the only thing that people wanted to know was, well, if, why don't you warn us so we, we didn't feel like we had to run away? Well, that's one response to a military occupation and infiltration, isn't it? Another response would have been that when a whole bunch of helicopters showed up with military on the ground, that you realize they're not supposed to be there, notwithstanding that the, maybe the LAPD says, which is their agent, said everything's okay. Why wasn't 100,000 people down there with guns saying, whoa, you're not supposed to be doing this, period. Go to your military base and do it there. Build your city there, but you don't come down here. What happened to that for all your Second Amendment author authorities if you think that's what you're going to resort to? And when you saw this happening in L.A., and it's happening as a military maneuver, they don't train for nothing, folks. This isn't to take over to the over to the Middle East. Go look at the Middle East. They send in airplanes and cruise missiles there. They blow everything down to, to there's not a building standing, and then they go in. There's no urban left when they get done. In fact, a lot of this countryside isn't urban at all. So they're not training to go take it somewhere else. No, you're looking at the carnival mirror back at us. Did I hear 100,000 people come down with their rifles, with their go, whatever, their pea shooter, whatever, whatever. Whatever, blow dart guns, whatever they had. Did they come down and say, you're not going to do that here? When the helicopter started landing in parking lots, did they stop and get their, their cars in the way so they couldn't land and say, go back to your base? See, we're not even responding. If Even if we believed we had rights, we're not even responding. under. Even if we think that the Second Amendment could do something, we're not even responding within the authority. And then turning that attention on the mayor and the police department that allowed it. So here I am looking at this story, the military consequences are desensitizing people to something that's coming, whether or not they have us mentally locked down or whatever, you're getting agreeable to the fact of something that was supposed to be a violation of law. And, you want to talk about impacts? Administratively, which they normally have to do, which you see that's gone out the window, 
the impact would have been weighed. The impact to the city would have been weighed. The inconvenience to the people, the scare, the health would have been weighed against them doing it somewhere else. Why? Because the alternative is the least intrusive. When I see people saying that they were scared out of their lives and wanted to run, that wasn't least intrusive. And I just look at this and look at all the failures in us, not putting a list of the standard that they should be held to they, these people that are doing this stuff. I don't disregard that it's the military doing an invasion of L.A. That's the military doing an invasion in L.A. How do you feel about that, Second Amendment carriers? And I'm not asking you to go out and get your guns either, because you don't even understand what you're saying. As I, I think I wrote back in 1999, the Second Amendment people are like drunk on this, this Second Amendment power, and they're too intoxicated to actually do something, and if they came out to function, it'd be dysfunctional anyway. If you think that this stuff comes out of my mind just today, no, I've been thinking about this for a long time. We're in a bad way. And then we see this predictable stuff happening, coming down. They tell you, remember, the urban environments. They talked about this in their manuals brought back. I just talked about it a couple weeks ago, what, 19, 2009, picking up a UN standard and study. So I don't know why people don't see this or just dismiss it, or once they see it, they're dismissive and they say it's nothing more. It would be interesting, and I'm not asking for the violence. I'm saying, where were when the military came to invade, where were the citizens underneath the Second Amendment to say, you can't come here? Not just because you can't come here. There's also federal laws that are not allowing this. Well, unless for one consideration, and they'd have to tell it to you. Otherwise, you're going to go to guns right there. And that's because, and they're not going to tell you, so they're going to have to back out because they don't want to tell you because that's, the rule under international law, they can't get the natives riled up, which would be 100,000 of you showing up, not to shoot anybody, to get the helicopters out of your city, because they belong somewhere else. They belong in another country where war is declared. And you're standing up for your own rights against a superior fighting force. That would be why you did it, but you didn't. And so I hear a bunch of yak and clack and noise about the Second Amendment. I see nobody interested to actually form up in a mind. You want to talk about hive mind. This would be the hornets coming together to stop an invasion. They didn't happen. What they did under the color of that drill, boy, I don't know either. No, we're just standing in the desensitization and the scaring people to death and all the crickets that we've now developed out of L.A. What did they actually do? Where did those troops go to do? What did they take? Would they? Whoop. Who got hauled off? What assets got stolen? Yeah, conjecture, but I don't know, folks. Now we see this stuff and we let it happen. We don't know what crimes are going on underneath all this and what are being prepared, how we're being accepting of this. This is another test as well in that level all by itself. All you did is made a phone call to the LAPD. They said it's okay, and you said, okay, I'm afraid. Stop it. No, no, no. It's going to take a little bit more than that. I mean, actually, a lot more. You're going to have to show as a society you're cohesively responding in the right way. Uh, even if I reduce it to administrative things, like I said, impacts and the solutions, the alternative, even if I get inside the method, would have been better than to scare everybody. And so we had to do it by surprise. Somebody knew, folks, somebody knew. Not that nobody knew. It wasn't a surprise to the ones that executed it, was it? So these stories that come out also are kind of uh, detrimental as well. you got to read through that, but... Yeah, what TF, w, I say what, WTF is going on in downtown L.A.? Army war drills continue across, continue across Los Angeles. Across Los Angeles, folks. Nary a real peep comes out around this stuff. Having started on Monday, the United States Army continues its war drills across the greater Los Angeles metropolitan area, the greater Los Angeles metropolitan. All these are jurisdictions, folks. Area through Saturday that will, with the goal of enhancing that's sustainable right there. Enhancing Army Special Forces skills by, quote, operating in urban environments. Army Special Operations Command said in a statement. Where did they get that permission, folks? There's only two permissions I know they could possibly get. And actually, one wouldn't be valid at all. What's going on? Now, I ask you the other question. When you see this going on, and you think you live in a constitutional republic under law, 
maybe you might ought to rethink the reality of where and what the condition is. What's this? When the condition is that you have invading armies, where notwithstanding you think they're from the United States, remember, the United States is a foreign district way across the country from L.A. All right? Got that? It's not even a state. It's a government. It's got a territory over there. What's this invading force coming in? Under what, is, what reality are you having? What's the state that allows that? Can't be a constitutional republic that's been kept by the people. And I'm asking people to start analyzing that. I don't know what you're going to come up with, and I don't even know what you think you're going to do about it. I don't even know if you might have a plan. My point is that you don't even really want to look at it that way. And if you have, you stop thinking when you figured out it's too dangerous. You now we'll just talk about how scary it is. Ooh, we're just going to have to go to guns, and I'm going to feel righteous in my indignation. When I finally stand out there with my pea shooter, I'm going to shoot, and it's going to be, I'll be shot and dead, and I'll have done my thing. I've stood up against tyranny. No, that's not how that's going to work. You're just going to die. When you could have actually gone out and showed the hornet hive that comes out when they start acting this stupid. Did anybody do that? I know, the phone call, big deal. Who cares? I mean, part of my mind, and I, I don't want to get too wild, part of my mind says 100,000 people show up with the uh, organ. I mean, they, under, they talk about a regulated militia. They're internally regulated by the object of what they're doing. Remember I told you about not being part of a group but showing up to do something and denying that there's any group because you're there on your own volition by your non-dependence of the principle that you're standing for? That's the same thing. The regulated militia isn't one by formal regulation. It understand, the regulated militia would be someone who, a group of people that know what they're there for without being told. And that's the regulation. Now, remember, regulation isn't control. Regulation is to make equal. Now, what are you making equal? Against a subject matter. What's this? An invasion. Everybody knows their place and takes their position and moves in and does what they have to do and says, out of here. Did that happen, folks? And I think the answer was clear. It didn't happen. And I'm telling you, we have a long way to go as a society before we start talking big and bad about the Second Amendment and what it can do, and also then say that there's nothing we can do waiting for that time, which is going to happen. And if it doesn't happen on a mass scale, it may have happened here to the guy and gal they took out in L.A. relative to this point. Or, if not that, the guy and gal that just died in in Texas for all y'all standing up for your rights there. And a no knock in a place that you have the right to li defend your castle. Look at, to the, uh, look at the audacity of the military in, in, at that point. I don't care that they are alleged to have sold heroin. There's a, supposed to be a process where you arrest somebody, you bring them to trial, which means they have to be alive to do so. You put them through the process, forever corrupt it is, and you then incarcerate them if they can get proof, which is 92% or 98.2% of the time. Okay, fine. They didn't enjoy that. They enjoyed your, their civil rights. And that's not good enough. I don't care even if you consider yourself a freed slave, and that's the rights the government has given you. They deserve to go through the trial, and those people in Texas deserve to be more protected after the fact than what I'm hearing. Well, it makes perfect, at least perfect sense, right? I mean, what, are we going to get onto something else? North Texas is, is doing facial recognition and everything as well. I mean, they're in on it. It's all, all this stuff is coming through technocracy, which is coming through sustainable development, which is all supported by the, the organizations I've told you it is, by the methods I tell you that it's done. And we look at the L.A. and say, oh, look what's going on down there. That's not good. And that's the limit of our response in a society that was required us to keep a republic that kept the military outside and not inside. And excuse me, I keeps coming to my mind. I can't think of the act. Com Posse comitatus? Is that the one? You're not supposed... Oh, and I understand there's some question about whether it's valid. It's like the habeas corpus. I'm not talking about the questions. I'm talking about if you insist that those were good principles, where are you all when I hear a cricket? Where are you all then to say any claim and complaint? I'm only talking at this point. I'm, I'm talking about a scary thing in my mind. My, my, I get scared when I talk to you folks like this because I'm asking. I know everyone's going, well, we got to go to guns. No, I'm saying you may have to, but really, step back. Think about what you're not doing. Think about the condition you don't know that you're in. 
can look at the reality of what's going on. Stop asking questions like uh, like you're asking and saying, okay, how did that get there and how did I allow it and how am I going to help to stop it? I may not be big enough by myself uh, to work to go down to a seated decision like the mayor and the police and pull them together and say, listen, you're going to explain the authority that you had to do this or you're going to resign. You know, better yet, when they showed up as an emergency unannounced, you show up with a hundred, who cares? A million guns. I don't care how much it took to show them you're responsive as a society like a hornet to an invasion of any character. Where are we as a people? And I'm suggesting when you didn't see that happen, that's where we is. Right there. Nothing. Crickets, and it's coming on us. They're going to start doing that to people they want to take out anywhere. The border patrol is starting to kill, shoot people. It, it's, it's escalating even more. The boundaries of the military occupation are being more, uh, by excuse, are being more known to us now. See, they, 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 they're having to excuse it because they don't want you to, t they don't want you to know that it's actually in place. But they excuse it and they give you a plausible reason for as arbitrary as a hundred mile di distance is from every border, which you kind of forget that the ports and the, air, the municipal, international airports are, are borders. Otherwise, why have customs? But anyway, forget that they're just making this blanketing over your expectation that they have a right to exist. Oh, some of you are resisting. Maybe not so well. I keep telling you there's a certain way to do this, and you're not doing it. I'm watching the videos now. You're not doing it. You're not going to put the you're not putting the word of the law in your mouth to tell them in the first contact that explains to them where the in this case for the border where the Supreme Court and you have the case and you have it in your bag of facts and law that the Supreme Court said all you get to ask me for is whether or not I'm a resident and when I tell you yes that ended your authority you tell them that and then you tell them to continue further will be multiple felonies now you're setting a record, especially on video, that's now doing the next step. You're not just saying, oh, did, did, am, I, am I free to go or am I detained? Yes, you're detained, obviously, but you can't, can't, can't go. But what's the standard? They ask you, can I see in your trunk? What do you say? I have the right not to open my trunk. Instead of saying, well, the limit of your authority was asking me whether I was a citizen. And now I'm asking you what probable cause you have that I'm not. Another word in your mouth. Is the failure of us as a society to stop the problems in the first instance before we got them going? And I guess I'm getting off on what I was going to go on, but here we are, this military thing going down. It's not new now for us in the last 10 years. These are not new. Where have we been? All those folks, Jade Helm, all those states, especially those of you, don't mess with Texas. They messed with you, Texas. They messed with you good. So much, just now, now they realize you're not going to respond. Now they're coming in even more. We got more and more and more. And if you think it's, a, you know, again, the, the stories of the reflections of what's going on in the world, the military consequence that we live in and what the governments will do and continue to do as this thing starts to scale up. We already heard the defi we already heard the report that I reported behind the woodshed in uh, what, South Dakota or North Dakota about using drones and then agreeing in another state also agreeing to weaponize those drones. Well, here comes the product from China. China unleashes killer bots and drones that carry out airstrikes on their own. I, that's a, I'll need to read more. You want to see that story, go ahead and read it. They're going to now be able to just buy the material they need to come che check you, run you down on this artificial AI on some bureaucrat behind the scenes, ag, uh, executive expedience without due process. Folks. It's coming right here. I don't know why this becomes a question and why I hear crickets in the society that it professes to be one that respects freedom and has respect for themselves, I guess, more than and otherwise, and respects the families that they have or, or, or to come. Moving on in the control, the massive control that's in our lives and how this thing really works and how I told you earlier you can start tack, tacking in through a plausible cause, through a thread that connects all this stuff together to a military consequence. And it, this is all not unknown. It's just that no one really wants to tie it together and say it's real and, and important and we need to stop it, I guess is my main problem. And then how to go about doing that, which I try to bring here. All I bring it. I don't try. I bring it every week. And uh, those of you that track on it, you see it and you start to get as best you can uh, onto it. And I have. To, I know I have to be patient. I've been doing this a while. But 
doesn't mean with the expedience of uh, of executive expedience come on. We don't have too much time to 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 think about it, and yet we're going to have to be very thoughtful about it as well. Leaked WikiLeaks doc reveals U.S. military use of IMF World Bank as unconventional weapons. Some of you that are red and aware, you know that. This is not news. WikiLeaks is being credited with exposing it. Well, folks, as I say, these are notices, and you're looking for evidence and proofs, not your opinion. We could all research this. I could tell you it's in the writings. You really don't know sometimes it's actually working. Here's some documentation and proof that it's going on. It doesn't matter where you go in the financial world. It could be used as a military weapon against you, and it is. And that's what debt, the sustainable thing is. The World Bank imposes sustainability. If the military is using that as a weapon, they're promoting sustainability. Our lawsuit in 2013 says that's treason, folks. Now, what are you going to do against that military? I'm actually asking you not to do anything until you have to understand the battle the battlefield. This is our problem. This is why they're in L.A. Whether or not they're doing specific to anything is irrelevant. That's why posse comitatus is not working, and if it did, it's supposed to, it's not working, and also why you're not actually enforcing your rights, notwithstanding whether or not there's an existence of a Second Amendment. Even in the administrative world, there had to be an alternative to doing that that was presented to somewhere in some public hearing that allowed it, because training is actually not that imperative. Anyway, no one knows you know how to address this. this. Is why I see lots of people going to public meetings and not being effectual. But notwithstanding all that, leaked WikiLeaks documents show the military use. This is the United States military using the International Monetary Fund and World Bank. And I tell you, go to World Bank and look for their toolkits to destroy your country. To me, is is the invasion of L.A. and no one talks, and the concurrence of their councils. Not their representative government, their councils to agree to a federal imposition that way, which is actually what they're they're um, having to address and not explain, even if they don't know about it. In leaked military manual on unconventional warfare, recently highlighted in WikiLeaks, the U.S. Army states the major global financial institutions such as the World Bank, International Monetary Fund, and organizations of economic cooperation and development, the OECD are used as unconventional financial weapons in times of conflict up to and including large-scale general war, as well as in leveraging the policy of policies and cooperation of state governments. Folks, the City Mayor's Council, the Sustainable uh, Association of, 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 Mayor, of Governors, this is all the thing, this is all tied together whether you actually want to see it or not. It's all in the news, telling us what's going on. You think that uh, you think that your finance, the finances, the control of the monetary system, the fiscal system, exactly, uh, more exactly, in this country, isn't a, a war weapon against you? Why I keep saying you got to get into some substance. Stop getting the imp stop feeling the impact. Go to some substance. Get some like specie in your life. Let's you have the if you want to have a hive mind. Let's have it in how we as hornets respond to an invasion how we respond as men and women that expect to be free and free from imposition. We respond in a way that we are protected in a shield and or a, the notice. We aren't going to take it anymore. If you don't aren't affected, if you have a gold and silver coin, you don't have something created or controlled by government necessarily in its possession and can't be in its possession, why aren't we opting for that right now? is really the lesson of this story. You see, these systems, these institutions are military weapons. That didn't come from nothing. Now, we can see it happening in Venezuela. We can see it around the world. I'm saying it's happening inside the country. Now, it's been happening. It's not just a recent occurrence. We're just starting to become aware of the tactics and techniques outwardly. I've been trying to tell you it's been happening inwardly. Manifestation of another raid, invasion of L.A., and all the officials are cool with that, and the lack of response by the people, more than a phone call and being afraid, is really the, the, the definition of a fallen society to start with. Certainly at the brink, we're already sliding in. I don't know this thinking of this. I don't even know what more to say about that. Why? Why is this working? Because of that executive expedience. 
you're no longer seeing, um, you know, they claim that the, judi the judiciary was independent. Yeah, it's independent of law now. It's independent of accountability. You've allowed all that. It's independent. No one realizes what they're saying when they say this stuff. It's a private, public-private partnership that's actually taken over all your states in the Bar Association. That's your independence. You want to declare, you want to you go ahead and celebrate that independence, folks? Yeah, go ahead. Let's see what it's getting you. And this is what's bringing up, I get back to the France uh, thing. You can go out there and, you can get out there and get it in the streets, but that's the people that are commanding the, 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 the military officials, whether whatever costume they wear, or by whatever agency they may or may not acknowledge, commanding the, the military soldiers in the street to go beat you up in France are the same ones that they're blow, are, are shooting you and killing you and raiding your towns and cities in the United States of America. And it's all based on the same premise identified as admitted, not by my opinion, even though, again, I look for it because I know it's coming. I'm just waiting for the proof because no one will believe the guy behind the woodshed. And then really many, many people won't put it into practice actually the right way. Well, I'd rather, like I've told you, I've done this. I've been very careful to do this. It's something I'll do that I don't see maybe lots of more people do. They'll step out first without the proof and, and, and not really be able to have the substance of what they're doing. I'll understand the substance and then wait for the proof to be stated by the enemy. And we saw that in the murder memo. And I talked to you about all of that coming, and then the proof came out, so I can say it, not by my words, not by the black and white no one wants to read, but by someone's statement telling me this is what we're going to do. And that was in 2012 when we finally got that murder memo to show you that they were the executive was going to executive expedience, forget the judiciary, notwithstanding its, pro, its problems that we have with it. And that same thing is going on in France. And when you see it where the rules of France are removing the judicial and legislative functions in how they're addressing people that are in the streets protesting of, of an oppression against them. And I, again, I tweeted this thing out. Anybody wants to follow up to Twitter? I, I try to advance some of these things out in 288 characters, how very best I can. The chirp, chirp, chirp go the crickets to the beat of the jackboot stomp. That's us, folks. I see that. No, I see the L.A. invasion no different. Lots of people dying in L.A.? No. That's not what that's all about. And we really don't know. Maybe there's a target there as well. Another theft going on right in front of everybody's, uh, maybe going on right in front of everybody's view, but they're missing it because of the big show. I don't know, folks. I just know I see a lot of stuff that shouldn't be happening that is, and that was not supposed to happen in a society that where the people were respectful of themselves and were to be vigilant against the intrusions. When I say that, I'm just paraphrasing other people's statements before us that brought us here that make a lot of sense to me, that I see now. I don't have to go to guns. I can see it through the method that they use to in, invade us, as I spoke to you early on about the best sciences qualification standards that are, are fraud. And so we also sit by, and guns come out with helicopters and high-powered stuff come against us. Uh, we don't even respond with, with numbers to say we're not going to tolerate this anymore. I don't care what the mayor said. I don't care what the police chief did. And you go both, you both of you should be resigning. And you, Mr. Sheriff, you should resign too. You're supposed to keep this thing peaceful. You didn't. You broached the peace by your acquiescence to it. How simple is that, folks? In mass, you folks, what a strong arm you have sitting quiet. But here, it's coming, folks. The, the, uh, the, the Congress is going to come up with some interesting things this year, whether or not they get it passed, because you need to have a concurrence by the Senate at the federal level, I don't know. But they're still bringing stuff in uh, at the state level, and we talked about California and all that stuff. Well, a new gun bill would require, would, it hasn't happened yet, buyers to reveal social media history. I don't even know, you know, again, I don't even want to read the story more. I just want you to know this is the direction those of you the Second Amendment who won't well, go out and, and flush the military out of L.A., you don't have to shoot anybody. You just have to show a presence and don't tolerate it. And do some things, like I said, they want to start landing stuff in your parking lots, put the cars there, folks. Just keep them from flying in and tell them, go away. You're not supposed to be here. And before, if you're going to be able to be here, we're going to have a big public city meeting. We're going to find out about this. 
why you can't go out in the middle of Nevada and do this on your nuclear test site since you want to practice urban urban warfare and you want to do it like mimicking for the w- mid- Middle East where you drop and depleted uranium. Why don't you go practice out there while you're breaching my peace here? And that's and also dangerously, and on top of it all, even if it was even legitimate. A new gun bill would require your social history. If you don't think that we already have uh, the, the implementation of social technocracy across the globe, as we see the military is now in, in all development, fiscal development around the world, here we have the same guy, uh, same uh, like a Democrat from Buffalo Grove, saying the community is demanding action. And my question is, what community are you talking about? What community is that? The the ones that the the community that wants to tie a, bar- a knot in the barrel of a pistol? Are they the ones that misidentify what the firearms are relative to your rights? Are they the ones, are this a community that wants to commercialize a fundamental right antecedent even the Constitution? Is that the community we're talking about that wants this, is demanding this action? The ones that can make the system itself that makes money from felonizing everybody? Is that the community this guy's talking about? Because he's not representing the, the, the Second Amendment or the antecedent right of it, or the need against the very encroachment of this guy, DDEC. This is the mentality that's coming to incrementally and transparently steal from you. They want to bring it under the idea that some out-of-state felon can get a, I think it's in Illinois, who can get a gun in Illinois, and there's a loophole. You won't identify the loophole, but this is a fabricated, the fabricated event that they want the outcome, the robust outcome you heard in the other position. It's the same method over and over. No one challenges that this thing is already... They talk about an FOID, I think. I don't even know, I can't read it here because it's just a story. But uh, they get an FOID that happens, I think it's in, in Illinois. Th- there's already a process that would weed out these people if it was, I guess, maybe properly done. Maybe it's improperly done. I don't know. It doesn't matter. They want to fabricate a reason to bring on more control from a class of people. You might listen and say, well, that was a stalker. I don't want him to have a gun. Never thinking the second, third, and fourth step about what that means. And I went real quick to, I wondered, well, most felons can't get guns. A firearm, excuse me, I should say firearms. They can use black powder, I understand, but not firearms. So I looked around real quick. Almost, there's two statuses for stalkers. One's a misdemeanor and one's a felony. And so of the class of misdemeanors, that shouldn't be more than a misdemeanor. The felons would carry over. Why wouldn't their process already keep felons out? But that's not the point. It's not reality. It's an impact to a robust outcome that they want. Now, and they're, and they're telling us up front, they're telegraphing, all you all in the Second Amendment, they're telegraphing the method that they're coming to do this by. And I hear complaints. I saw some responses to this. But no one's doing the on-the-ground, boots-on-the-ground, literal boots-on-the-ground addressment of this thing in the proper way. So, I, again, for all everybody that wants to think they have rights those things don't just, they're just on paper. They don't mean anything until you want to bring them enforcement. We are in such a state now. The condition that we're in is such a state that we'll allow an army to invade a city with nary a peep. We don't have the idea on how to respond. And correctly, because it's going to be a special, this is a very touchy situation on top. Like I said, I, I scare myself even talking about it. Because I'm talking to a, bu- a society I'm noticing is not prepared at all or, or incapacitated. We'll talk a lot, but we're not really capable of responding. We're like toddlers still somehow. It's not a judgment on us. We need to rise up out of that. That's where we've been placed and we continue to, we continue to be, feel comfortable there. And this requires a whole lot more. They're coming after the, the this liberal idea is coming in different ways by the method we've identified. I, I was researched the method, identified it to where I was clearly able to see how to approach it in 2013. And the answer to that that uh, equity remedy was a silence, which, in a, as a matter of law, is a judgment and conviction against those we were suing. The bar association was a named party. The Democratic Party was a named party, and the members of it. This is a Democrat. What community is he saying is demanding action on this? I will bet 
the attorneys, I'll bet, the ones that tied the knot in the barrel of the gun, I'll bet those that want to take a right, make it a permit, a permission in commerce, I'll bet that's the community that's speaking. Where are you countering it? And I don't mean your opinion yakking at them. I mean, listen, you don't have the authority up front, first of all. And because you're doing it this way, notwithstanding your immunity, that's a treason. Because your first instance was to honor your oath. We want you impeached and have a force of people to impeach that, that felon. See, we're not responding at all, I guess is my, I don't see anything more than a, maybe a letter or a wisecrack in a chat room. And so the, the cage is being more and more built around us. We know that. There's more stories. It, it, you know, For those of us that are aware of this, it's a broken record. I'm asking us to look at this, see the proof of it, line item it out, and start to produce documents in places of deceits of decision that make the record for everyone else to see. The apparent, The transparent lie and fraud that's not disclosed that is allowing this to come upon us. And hopefully, I would have to hope that if enough of us, like I said, only 10,000 people across this country, grouped up in three, going to every jurisdiction, county jurisdiction, would be a formidable force to start to counter what I see, what we see. I know I see it. We see what our people, the colleagues I work with, what we see coming in through and how it comes through. So keep keep thinking what you are and keep complaining. And don't do anything and just wait for the revolution and you're going to find it. But I'm not so sure it's going to be more than you feeling uh, smug in the fact that you waited for the revolution and you fired your gun. Next thing you know, you see black. And for you, it's over. And we don't know what happens to the rest of society. And that was avoidable. And then blame the other side, which has blame, but not to the point that you were imposed upon with the obligation and duty to keep vigilant against it to begin with. So how do they take that away from you? Amazon is recording and using facial re uh, facial recognition to track sellers. We talk about financial connections. Amazon is going to now want to record your face and recognition. We're finding out it's a bunch of errors, but they want you to prove your face to them to sell. Buy and sell, you're going to have to have the mark of the beast, folks. Is that biblical? No, it's factual. That it was written in a book some almost 2,000 years ago or more, that's pretty phenomenal. We can uh, disregard it, or we can start to understand that they are now pulling, they're going to, those of you that are involved in Amazon, you will be having to make the choice, and a lot of you will make it to plug in, just to continue your existence through their service. And so I don't know what else to say. I mean, you'll make that choice. And I, the, the pity is the, the experience seems to be the, the the observation I've made over quite a few decades now looking at as we plug ourselves in. Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars is quite the manual. Protocols of the Elder Desire says we're going to be that way because we're, we're, this fallen nature is no joke. They They pit your needs against what they eventually want, and they offer you things to buy into, and it comes in many different forms. So if you want to sell on Amazon, apparently you're going to have to have a five-second snippet is all they need, a video uh, for their recognition, recognition technology. It's R-E-K. Can't even spell anymore, right? Everyone's got to be new and different, so you're making a product. Real-time uh, crime centers to spy on motorists in real time. So it is not, it's going to be, again, a real-time surveillance system is coming on. I don't even know how much more I want to read. Anybody who knows this is coming. I'm telling you, here it is. You've known it. But now we're going to have to really take this to task. But remember, you always have this as a transportation issue. Remember we talked about that. Transportation was one of the things that Thomas Coffin even mentioned. Transportation options. Well, this is in commerce, and this is also underneath the cover of a military that's doing this. And they are going to do 100% surveillance, but remember... They really don't have the right to take your right to use the highway. And if you go off from your, forget, drop your right to drive and turn around to the road law in your state and do what I've actually suggested to you to start doing as a, as a if you, if you, a record making campaign, even where you do have a driver's license, a permission to do an employment as an employee on a company that's doing business on the highway instead of just your right. 
uh, you're going to start to get a lot closer to getting at this thing. And you're going to be then establishing that they may have these real-time things, but they ought, you actually get an injunction. They ought not do it against you or those similarly situated. Do you understand the power of that? You or all of those like you. You stand up where no one else and you can help protect those. So here it's come. Look at the reports, the notice here, folks. We can disregard it. We can agree, shake our head, and just agree to it by allowing them now to do this to us. This becomes greater and greater opportunity for them to prey upon us. Yes, both in both. They use us as the varmint that they need, the human that they need to extract whatever pain, punishment, and penalty, and it's promoting praying to their God, isn't it? North Texas Police Department using facial recognition technology. You're not going to sell stuff on Amazon? You think North, North Texas? You don't mess with Texas? What a joke, you folks. I'm not talking to you being a joke. Look at what they're doing around you, and you keep saying that. Don't mess with Texas. They're messing with Texas. They've been doing it since 1868. I guess I'm trying to strike you uh, in a place we take on these idioms, these memes that are incorrect and improper, and they give us the wrong impression, like we're somebody special, and we're not. That sets us up for the takedown. North Texas Police Department using facial recognition technology. Okay, don't mess with Texas. The first story I see here is coming out of Texas. They're messing with Texas. And what do I hear on all you tough guys and tough gals? See, they don't care about your arms. They don't care about your legs either. They don't care about any of that. They care about how you will properly respond, and none of you are. Now, I could read the story, but the point is, is this technology, this surveillance, this military is coming down to give immediate access, and they explain in the story how they do it, and then you find out what's going on, you find out they all go through real ID in Texas. That's your first clue. How is that not a national mugshot database when they say so in the video you'll see on this link? Licensed mugshots. If you didn't think you're already a criminal and perceived and presumed to be one when you got the ID, was by your action, you consented. They say it has to be by consent, but you consent in your application. Stop me. Well, you're not, you're not going to be able to, but I'll say it anyway. Stop me when I haven't said this stuff before, folks. They tell you everything that how this is going to apply to you in Texas already. Don't mess with Texas. You've been messed with. And all y'all that have the real ID are in a national database that they tell you you're subjects and at risk to their misidentification. They tell you right in this video I got on this page. Will you please take the evidence of the notice and learn what's really going on and then maybe step, take a step back and say, we've got to really rethink how we're going to approach this. As long as you have what they are asking for, you've created what they have, what they've asked for, they are presuming you in that system and you are at risk. Know that, folks. When they say you're at risk for improper identification, know it. Do you, is that what you want? Is that what you signed up for? And I ask that with, I know you're com maybe completely ignorant. So some of you may know this, but a lot of you don't. But you didn't even have to do that if you understood the road law and understand the limited jurisdiction of transportation op options that they're providing for themselves to keep track of you all that you didn't need to, in to in engage in. And the fact that they're denying you those other things is a crime. In other words, if you look at some states, their insurance forms are tied into all this. They'll tell you right on the insurance form. If you are a service operator, you can't fill out this this accident form. Only drivers, or commercial drivers, are supposed to fill out an accident form for financial respons future responsibility. Where'd that come from? Where'd the future presumption happen? You don't even understand how this thing is wired, and you'll talk about drive-by right and how you have all these rights to be in places, and you don't understand you don't. You don't until you figure out how this thing works a lot better. That they tell you in the video that you're a subject, federal subject, that's the Title 49 I keep telling you the state's implementing, that you are the one that gave consent when you applied it to yourself and your signature sealed the deal. Well, you need to understand about rescission if you want to remove that, but don't do it before you've figured out that they're not going to recognize this granted right by the congressional grant down there. 
or anywhere until you straighten it out. That's why I say three more people would help. People in every jurisdiction would help. 10,000 people, we got this thing locked in six months, I'm sure. If not, okay, it's perpetual. We're supposed to be vigilant forever. Okay, forever, the rest of our lives. So that we keep we keep the helicopters from coming and flying in and destroying our peace and then taking one of us away, maybe. Or a bunch of us away. So, don't mess with Texas. You're already sold down the river. North, North Texas is already doing it. They're telling you right in the news report, Everything you are and everything you're at risk by doing so when you get the real ID. And how is that not a national database for criminals? I don't know. I don't know how it's not. Maybe you can give me an answer. So it's not even bad enough. You get your face now everywhere. They're not, now you're subject at risk to improper identification. Uh, now you try to speak out about it. Here it comes from the UK. Hate crime police investigate man's thinking after he criticized transgenderism. It's sustainable, folks, what they're going to do. You can't even think improperly. Thought police, it's here, folks. You have to have a word in your mouth on how to address it, though. They come to you under the presumption that they have the right to determine what you think. In other words, this for the United States, I could talk better there. If you have the right of free speech, you have the right of free thought. Where was their authority coming under color of a color of the of the of thought police having no authority whatsoever underneath a, an alternative reality where I can't speak my mind and they get to have a problem? Where are they not committing a felony to take away my right of free thought that is a pertinent my right of free speech? I can't have one without the other, folks. Why don't I hear more people talking like this, challenging the authorita that presents itself to? beat you down at every turn, bringing on the very outcome that they want. They're investigating your thought by what you say, by what you criticize. Is anybody going to turn this around? Is everybody going to just take it? Going to fight them? I'm going I'm to fight this. How? You never addressed them in the first instance. And I read this article. You didn't come back and challenge their right to do that against his right to speak. Oh, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff. I don't have the time to talk about it. I got Again, I got a, like a skipping stone on all this stuff. If you're not interested, I, I'm wasting your time st uh, that you're listening. If you are interested, there's a whole lot more than I can do on the broadcast. I can just give you what I told you. I set you on the path. You can take some of it from there. And I'm always available to advance that, uh, that uh, guide that, uh, that direction once you chose. Otherwise, it's, what do you choose? Nothing. I, chased, I talk about the void. If we don't have a focus, is that the best way we can do? Well, right now it's probably the only way we can start because we're not cohesive enough in our knowledge and our and our knowledgeable and our action in knowledge that we can come together to act in the right in the better place we should be targeting. And so I'm kind of uh, keep stepping back and stepping back. I'm finding some territory, maybe some of you more territory that may be more accessible by people. We can't actually do what we need to do. But we're not going to do anything unless we're able to do it. And so I say, for the mo for the first instance, find something that you may that may torque you a bit that you want to make right. Take a wrong and make it right, and work to work it out. You'll get the tools you'll need, and eventually, I would hope, I was hoping, and it may be again, you know, fool's errand. I was hoping we would all be working on our projects, and one day we'd all have enough experience in us that we say, okay, now what is the real cause? Not were the things that we used as teaching tools to get us to understand that, but where now do we take our now power that we now have in application? What are we going to focus on now? What are we? What's really driving this whole thing? Because it's not what I talk to you. I don't, it's not on all these myriad issues I talk to you about. But if I can't get anybody to step forward, I'd rather complain and wait for the inevitable. Oh, it's inevitable we're going to guns, and then watch it happen. I don't even know what to say anymore. So your thought. That's here. Your thinking, your expression from your thinking is being challenged. They want to tell you what you're supposed to think. It's in the UK now. Start thinking about this. You better have it, an answer when it comes around. The faster you have a good answer, the faster it won't it won't flare up. It's part of what I see, like the First Amendment audits and the and uh, 
and these uh, border check things, you're not going to the next step of challenging the authority, and they're taking that silence as that they make the next excuse. Listen, I just saw a video. When a guy says, I've stopped you because your car was dirty, and the next comment out of your mouth is that that's not your object, that you have no status, no um, authority to question the dirt on my car. You only had the authority to question my citizenship pursuant to this court case. The, that was not saying that was the wrong thing. Not challenging the authority up front and then going to the next step and saying, by what you've just done, if you insist on the path of asking me for the dirt on my car instead of my citizenship, as the Supreme Court said so, you're coming under color of a false authority to harm me. That's a felony. Are you persist? Are you intent to persist that? Are you going to continue down that path? And by the way, I've got recorders going, and I'm going to be bringing you into court. I'm asking you not to do the felonies. Do we have that extra in our mouth? No, nobody I see has that in our mouth. This false authority is not challenged in the first instance is our problem. Alabama police will not allow poor drivers to leave the state. Debt, the whole state becomes a debtor's prison now. Why? Because you have a driver's license. Why? Because that's presumed to be an employment where you should have an income. Now, there's no excuse not to pay them. What if you presented that you're not in commerce? You have no way to pay them. You ever thought about doing that? And now what have they got? Now they got a real problem if you understand the other extension about that, that they can't do that at all. I don't care even if they have a debtor's prison. They have to have a way because of the finding, the funding that they have, that they have to have a thing that you're taking that they make that you can give them back. They have control of the master employee slavery called employment. They have control over the money that, tra the, the, excuse me, the, the as money, the, the fiat that travels through that in commerce. Does anybody consider how, how it is you can be this debtor? Unless you've agreed to it. So this starts out, drivers have to, have to be by the application, you're sticking it to yourself. But the states are now locking you down. The poor are trapped in these states now, if this continues. Cops find man protesting facial recognition. You think you're going to get out of it? This is in the UK as well. Don't think and don't, don't resist, folks. They're going to beat you into submission unless you have a word in your mouth. I don't even want to read the story. You can, if you're interested in this and how to pull this together, here is the fact of the notice of what's coming, and there's a way to respond in the first instance to every bit of it as I see this going. There's the only reason why I bring these stories up as, and tell you that they're here. They are addressable. Where you find that they have the, the now vans that are taking pictures and you don't want them to take, you find out what that van is there for, you find out they don't have the right to force you. That's the first thing that should be out of your mouth. Because any extension of that is a, a color of authority and position, and that should be a felony in the UK as well. Woman calls police for help who showed up and killed her service dog. What's the message there? Stop calling soldiers to your house. I mean, I can read all this stuff. The title tells me everything I want, everything I need to tell you. You got I don't know what to say about the living in a military consequence. The evidence is everywhere. Why aren't people picking this up? Why are we continuing to believe otherwise? It's a big defect, and it's serious. And the other point, uh, no, here, no charges for man who shot, uh, shot a black man, mistaking him he was a gunman. You think you're innocent? You think you're going to help stop somebody? No, you're going to be in a mall with a gun trying to stop uh, sa save people, and the, and the cops will come and shoot you, and then they'll be exonerated. That's what? A soldier who hasn't violated the rules of war. Otherwise, that's murder. Thank you for being uh, listening today. I hope something I said inspires you. Hopefully, gets you digging in and searching stuff out. Get into a point that you can do some something. Uh, Grimner, thank you very much for what you do. Oh, I forgot to talk all about it. Uh, do donations, folks. This is the month. I apologize that Grimner. I wanted to do that a little earlier. Got going on the ideas, but uh, uh, thank you for any of the donations. Thank you for the generous donations that have come in. You can help out getting all the hardware to keep running the servers. And uh, I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature will. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. 
from behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast. This is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. A can of whoop ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.